and welcome to Separate Bathrooms. We would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders, both past and present. Hello from wherever you're listening this from. I'm Ali Dado. <laughs> I'm, I'm Cam Dado, <laughs> wherever you're listening this from. Yeah. There was a two in there, isn't there? I know. <laughs> Not being picky. You might have to Not say that again. Not being picky, honey. I have to say that again. I know. It's okay. I love that you said it. And it's you so know, good. I just should be in radio. I mean, I just think my language is amazing. Yeah. 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 You 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 present ideas really oh, well. You're so clear, clear, concise, my crisp. grammar. I make up words. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You listen to separate bathrooms <laughs> and you can learn more about the English language. You can learn more punctual, how to speak learn more punctual. To be, learn to be more <laughs> punctual. You get some electrocution lessons yeah. and to speak more punctual. Exactly. I love that. Today we're, we're, we're going to be learning to speak more punctual about money. Yeah, correct. Money. Um Money. Why did I just suddenly lean into a Donald Trump thing? <laughs> it's weird. I'm not sure. We, because um, he's all about the money, isn't he? He's a transactional fellow. Anyway, enough about that. We've certainly had our ups and downs with money, mm-hmm. honey. Brings up some emotions for me. I know. Yeah. Huh? I know. You're still PTSD on money. I am a bit. Yeah. I'm a bit. Uh, but that's okay. I'm, well, you know, I've had forty years in the entertainment business. <laughs> That'll <That's>, do it. <laughs> contracts sometimes come and sometimes go. You've got to be okay with it. Look, it is a safe bet to say that most of us want to not only have more money, but we want to be better at using the money that we are getting. Correct. Well, we have Tash and James Millard uh, on the podcast today, and and they've got a mission to help us and to help you. Together, they've created and operate a financial planning company. It's called Sufficient Funds. And James actually has a book out, but it's called Insufficient Funds, Making the Right Money Decisions to Bring Your Big Plans to Life. Now, the way they've written Insufficient, though, they've Mm. got like the I-N sort of faded into the background and then the sufficient part of that word is in bold. So it's sort of like you go from insufficient to sufficient funds. Oh, that's that's cool. why it's that's why it's written kind of like that subliminal way. suggestion yeah, there yeah, from the publishers. Totally. It's interesting because I that that word insufficient funds talk about PTSD because how many times in the past have we stood in the line at so many times at the market and you pay for your food yeah. and your groceries and then insufficient funds come yeah. up. Oh, leave the groceries my. there and go, oh. can I come back and get this? Yeah, be right back to get this stuff. <laughs> yep. So the book is um, it's about to plan your future and find financial freedom and define what sufficient means to you. And it's not just about settling for less. I like that. It It's get a definition. Yeah. So because often we, we we have these terms used and we, we use the terms, they're, they're delivered on us, but people have different definitions for what they are. So it's good yeah. to get clear. On that. All right, we're hoping to get the inside scoop and maybe a little more. Welcome, Tash and James Millard. You two, Tash and James, welcome to Separate Bathrooms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we get into the subject of money and how it makes most of us cuckoo, this is a relationship <laughs> podcast. Now, you guys work together. You're in money. We'll get to that a bit later, as I said. Uh, um, how, how did you two meet as he finally gets to it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this one. Why don't you start with that, Tash? Sure. So we actually met at uni. So interestingly enough, James was studying the same thing as me, which was science. So it wasn't finance back then. Um, and we actually met out at a nightclub. One of the- we met at a nightclub called <laughs> Surf City. Yeah, Which yeah, old school. Unfortunately, is no longer. In where but was that? Newcastle? Did you say that was in yes. that was in Newcastle? Yep. Yeah, the palm Surf trees City, and the mirrored walls. Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was that in the last millennium or this millennium? Uh, it was right on the edge. Of yeah, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you met at a nightclub, which is kind of great. Ali and I met at a nightclub too. We did. It was pre-organized, but it was at a nightclub. But that's where that's I first clapped eyes on things. you. Correct, Amundo. Anyway, not a, not about us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 was it love at first sight? What happened? 
Oh gosh, we were, we were pretty young, so I'm not sure if it. I'm not sure. Yeah, we took a little while to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> and how long were you were you dating a while before you popped the question? Did you? Yeah, I think we were yeah. for about eight years before. Yeah, oh, oh you gave it yeah. a good long shot. Yep, you weren't mm. quite sure for a bit, or you just wanted to stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more stretching. We were, yeah. I mean, we were we were early days at uni, so that was, yeah. yeah I don't know. It was a it was a good time. So by the time you guys married, were you then? Because you went into finance first, didn't you, James? Yeah. So I I kind of I I started at uni in science and was then into commerce. I rolled into a very boring corporate money job in Brisbane for a couple of years and and went from there. So, yeah, I was kind of straight into the money world. Yeah. Tasha's story is probably a little bit different. Yeah. So we, even though we started the business together six years ago, I was still, I, I was actually on maternity leave at the time when we started and then I went back into my corporate role, which was in medical research. So I was doing that for a while still until two years ago I jumped into the business. And and time. tell us about those, that first moment of deciding to go make, start your own business. Like what was going on for you at the time and, and in the world oh as gosh. well? <laughs> Far out. So, I mean, we were, Tash was, Tash was pregnant with our second child at the time and we'd, we were living in Sydney in the wonderful Queenscliff and gorgeous kind of mm-hmm. dropped into a, a mortgage that was really extending ourselves a couple of years earlier. Mm. and then made the call. I I started a business with two others and that wasn't really going where we thought it would, so we made the split and then Tash and I started Sufficient Funds together at the start of July 2018, which, and Eden was born in August 2018. So our two babies were, well, two of them, business and and, and Eden all, all at the same time and, yeah, that was a that was an incredibly rocky start. Uh, yeah, and he it? he was born premie, so it was a lot of time in hospital. Oh, and, right. Um, yeah, we kind of had to drop everything at, at that point in time, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, what was it? A month in hospital before he was born, and then a month after, in and out a bit more after that. So yeah, we had like that was a. I mean, we got a lot out of that. That was probably one of those lessons. Very early on in business, especially, but in life, it just you, sometimes you just got to drop everything and perspective just takes over. You you kind of have no choice. Yeah, absolutely. T- tell us about the business because you you are um, a finance business basically, but tell us a bit more about it because the way you sort of approach money and and your clients is a little bit different, and I actually really love how you approach that. Yeah, so, I mean, the focus is always for me and, and kind of where I've lent in terms of the money stuff is that that side of things isn't very approachable, as most of the world will agree, I'm sure. And so we lean pretty heavily towards life and then life being let's get really clear on all of that so that then you can allow your money plan just to facilitate that. And money really is an enabler and that's it. So don't get stuck and caught up in it and what you're doing and how you're doing it. Just make a plan around aligning your decisions to everything you want to do that you actually value, that you really care about. And and the money side of things, once you get that right, it can take care of itself. Yeah, I love that. I was sitting next to a guy on an aeroplane on an international flight. He We were up the front. I was being paid for up the front of the plane. <laughs> I had no business being up there, except that I was there, and he was clearly very wealthy with his dripping in gold and a Rolex and all that sort of stuff, and we were having a chat about nothing, and about two hours into the flight, a couple of glasses of champagne, I I leant over to him and I said, what is your definition of money? And he said, eh, that's a good question. And then he looked at me square in the eye and he goes, lube. <laughs> and I'm like, Really? He owns a lube business, right? And Guess so. From it. Yeah. yeah. Astroglide or something <laughs> like that. Could you imagine? Val- I own Astroglide. I am the <laughs> king of lube. He just goes, Valvoline. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? Valvoline. Uh, yeah, he, uh, no, it said lubricant. And um, he said, it's it's simple as that. He said, you really shouldn't be scared of money. He said, it's just, just call more in. And I said, well, that's probably- 
<laughs> Probably easy for you to say. I don't remember how the rest of the conversation went. Do you? Uh, do you uh, guys until have... you asked him for a million dollars yeah. just because you were? Yeah. Do you have some more Astro Glide, mate? Could you just spare a mil? <laughs> would be nice. You've you've got five hundred of them. Yeah. You're not going to miss one. Just give me one. Just one. <laughs> Come on. Do you have a definition of money? What is it for you? Oh, I don't know if I've got a definition of money. I mean, it's it just comes back to that. It's just it's there to do all the things you want to do. Mm. It's not a like don't don't make it the core. Don't make it the core of what you're trying to do, right? Like this this idea of money. Money's scary, and and you just want to go. Where's my life at? And how do I just align it with that? And mm. I mean, we can unpack if you want to how to how to do that. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what we attacked in the book. Is yeah. some really critical steps in just getting clear on what you want to do and then bringing it together. So it's really, okay, so that's it then. Have an idea about what it is you want to do and then and then take action based on, on that rather than like, we, shit, we just got to make money mm. and yeah, have the stress then, all around that. As advi- like advisors, we're, we're constantly approached by people who come thinking, well, they're money people. We better tell them our money problems or our money goals, right? And that's critical right. and it's all part of it. But right. if you go to an advisor and they say to you, what are your goals? You're going to straight away naturally say, well, I want to reduce tax or save more or invest or deal with this lump sum I've just got inheritance or whatever it might be. Hmm. And if you lead with money, you skip over the important stuff you dive straight into trying to fix into solutions mode, trying to fix those money problems, all of a sudden life takes over and everything else changes and the plan at worst, the plan can completely fall apart because you're investing but you forgot why. Mm. And so if you can come back to get clear on the stuff up front that actually matters, list your values out, list your goals, think about milestones that are coming up, all of that sort of thing, we call this define and it's the first step, it's the missing step really for how to attack your money plan. And it can be so much more scary when you look at it from a financial perspective, all this financial jargon. If you look at it from life, you know, everyone's got life goals. Everyone understands what they want to do next, what they would like to achieve in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Just makes it easy. Tash, have you seen um, some really great success stories from the advice that your company give to people? I think we see, and you know, I'm not a, personally a financial advisor, but through the business, we see people achieving their goals every day. So that's something that yeah. I think we're very lucky to see that. We see, we definitely see people come to us that aren't in the best spot, but we also see the amazing work that comes through every day. If I can think of, you know, people that have um, been left with, unfortunately, large inheritances. Uh, I can think of a client who was widowed and she had to really figure out where to go from there um, and to see her move on from that from a you know a life goals perspective but then also get her money sorted and feel confident right. um, getting her feet back under her was really that's something that stayed with me. It's interesting you say that when because um, you said unfortunate and a large sum of money you know, in the same sentence. Mm, yeah. And that's not normally, well, I wouldn't have thought that would be a, well, an unfortunate cer- event. But under the circumstances. Oh, oh as a widower. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Cam, I mean, we are seeing, some, Cam saw dollar signs and got excited. <laughs> well, maybe that's the whole it. point I, about someone's life being someone's, lost. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I, I just go, big chunk of money in. <laughs> oh, I'm so driven by money. It's terrible. You're not actually but, driven by money. Oh, I wish we had more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a million? You, right? you need to come and work with us, Cam. We do. We'll we do. Out. Mate, we were saying that. Mate, that's, that's the thing. And now we've been reading so your book funny. as well and I'm like, this is really good. Like, do us oh, I haven't, I haven't so turned you off yet. James, no. Ali says to me when, when, we were, when we were preparing to meet you guys, she's like, I think we need to work with these two. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah, I think so. I said, well, let's just have a chat and get to know them first. Yeah. All right. Well, so far, Ali's Ali's good. Which she's met that she's met the criteria. We'll we'll work on you. There okay. You yeah, you can work on me. I guess where I was going with that question, though, Tash was um, I hear a lot about people who win the lottery, and that's mm-hmm. a good news thing. And then two years later, their life is in the shit. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because and, yeah. and I'm I'm guessing in America, if you win the lottery, they actually make you. I, 
think, well, I can't make you do anything because it's your Fifth Amendment um, or whatever amendment it is. Uh, but they actually have you go through some kind of a, a, a money course on how to manage right. this massive you know, windfall that you've experienced. Um, is is that a common thing, do you think? Winning the lottery? I'm not well, sure. No, but oh, definitely. I wish it was more common than not. But, <laughs> but coming, no, into, moment, a large but sum coming of money into a large sum then, of money yeah, and not so, knowing how to deal with it. Yeah. At the moment, we are about to see the biggest lot of inheritance come through from the, la- from the elder generations through to the younger generations. Right. Um, this intergenerational wealth transfer. And we're one of the things that we advocate for is having those conversations up uh, up front early um, before people pass away and, and then you're left with figuring it out at, at the end. Why not see the benefits um, of passing that money on to your offspring a bit earlier? So, mm. Yeah, it's always that crazy time. I mean, where someone will come to us and it's often and because we, we work with a lot of people under 50 and sometimes they're in their kind of mid to late 20s mm-hmm. with this lump, of, lump sum like we're talking about. They didn't want it. They wish it was different, but now it's there and they feel this incredible responsibility to steward it well. Yeah, and, sure. You know, but sometimes, I mean, what we've been, as Tash was alluding to there, is like having these conversations with people earlier and getting it on the table. So if you've got an estate plan in place, tell your kids, tell your family, tell them who's getting what, what it looks like so they can get their heads around it. Uh, and if they've got a problem, bring it up now and we can talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a very it can be a very touchy subject. I mean, money is it's so taboo for everyone or so many. Yeah. And yeah, you know, unfortunately that means it doesn't get talked about until it's too late sometimes. Do you have couples come in and they're at odds with each other? So not necessarily at odds with it, with each other. We have so uh, about 75% of our clients are female and it's mostly the mm-hmm. females that are coming, you know, when it's a couple, it's generally speaking, the female that's leading that conversation. Um, so sometimes we can see people with malaligned goals or, yeah. you know, not necessarily, you know, someone might be on board and the other one's not. Um, but generally that's kind of part of what we do, unpack those goals up front and make sure that everyone's on the same page because mm-hmm. that's important when you're a couple and you've got money that you're sharing, it's really important to get that right. And it's okay to have, you know, the separate bank accounts. I know that's a question yes. we get often. Is it okay to have a separate bank account? Like you're going to run off with your money or whatever. <laughs> it's okay to do that, um, but it's a conversation up front to have if you want the combined bank accounts or if you want the separate bank accounts or a mix of both. Yeah, interesting. I, Cam um, encouraged me to get a separate bank account not that long ago. We've been together 32 years. Yeah. And it was probably about a year ago. Yeah, so we've been together for for over thirty years, and and we just had a joint bank account. And I yeah, said, for everything. Because Al, yeah, she was. I was saying, honey, you're making your own money. You really should be putting money away for yourself. And that was more about uh, from the example of my mum, because she's mm-hmm. always had her own little stash, you know, and she'll give her grandkids a a, a, a present, or she be up selling her pottery and she'd put her money in her own bank account you know so I thought it was important that that you had it is it are you glad you have that oh yeah and there was an I remember we had a many many episodes ago (laughs) she's got more money than god by the way (laughs) so not true so not true and I have no access to it no Yeah, what was I thinking? <laughs> no, but I remember this female money advisor who talked about that because mm. I don't know if you've come across this as well, Tash and James, that a lot of women often don't have their own account and there's such an empowerment in that. And I feel so empowered <laughs> by having awesome. my own bank account. Mm. I yeah. absolutely love it. <laughs> And I, it's good. It's, I really like it. Feels so good to me, and I love watching it grow. And I love to be able to go. Let me treat you, Cam. Yes, it's yes. my treat. You know what I mean. I just love to be able to do mm. that. And, and yeah, same buying stuff for the kids. Mm. Or I mean, my trip to ha- Tahiti is coming up on my own, and I just can't <laughs> wait to go on that. By the way, I didn't really, know about that. <laughs> that's, that's no. a revelation right there. No, I mean, not how that. how ridiculous is it that we're actually having this discussion, though? Right? The, yes. I mean, the equity between partners should should be there, and you know, it's not necessarily in so many cases. We had, I mean, we one part that we had, like we added into the book, 
and and put a kind of a fairly big section on it was this idea of the gender pay gap and gender yes, super gap right. that then comes as a result. And that's not necessarily driven by anything other than the systemic issues around the government and uh, how we support people when they start a family especially and, yep. you know, things like super balances starting off similarly and, yeah, the wage balance might be off and if that's the case then they stop work and it might be the female is having the child and spending more time off and returning to part-time. And that's all generally that's a natural occurrence for, for so many but, but it lends itself to then getting closer to retirement with a super balance that's way off in terms of partners. Mm. And I mean, there's all sorts of things. I, I actually delivered a plan to a client yesterday and we talked through, he was actually going to split 25% of his contributions into her account. And you can do that uh, if you meet all the criteria. So there's options to kind of do things like that. So even if you do see yourselves together forever, which most people would say, yeah, that's the case for us. It's sometimes it's not going to be the case, right? right. And so yeah. having a bit more stability, even just in the numbers like that, even with the, that very boring topic of super can actually change someone's complete like outlook on it all. Is, is there something as basic that you could give us as three top financial tips? Is that really hard to do? <laughs> no, no. And, we, you know, we try and make everything really relaxed and relatable. So absolutely yeah. we can we can do that. Um, awesome. So number one, we definitely advocate for just knowing where your money's going. So ins and outs of your money, mm. opening up your bank account and just seeing where is your money. And the number of people that just don't do this or don't have a good rhythm around doing it is astounding. So I think that's just an easy one. You can sit in a waiting room on a train and just open up your bank accounts and just have a scroll through. Getting on the same page is a really important part and this comes back to that same that overall kind of discussion around being super clear on what you want to achieve that's not an individual discussion that's like that part we call define is get really clear on your goals and you guys can have joint goals but you're also going to have individual ones Mm. yeah are you are you taking cam to tahiti no no so there you go (laughs) Uh, you're allowed I'm to, to do that, right? I'm going to Scotland. Yeah, where are you going? Oh, right. Play golf. No, yeah. I'm just we're yeah. just making this up. No one's no one's going anywhere but Cam because he does luxury escapes, and I sit at home making spaghetti bolognese for my youngest daughter. Next year, next year we're going somewhere special together. Are we? Yeah. Surprise. Of course we are. Okay. All right. It's you a heard big it birthday. first. It's a big, we've got a big celebration yeah, next year for you. Yeah, but you've got some you. job that's anyway. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, you two. <laughs> we'll so, discuss yeah. that later. <laughs> getting, control, getting control of your money, getting super clear on what you want to achieve, and that's defining it before you start planning for it. And then, I mean, something we could probably talk all day about and we won't, but defending the, the section in the book, it's the fourth chapter, it's called Defend and it's when it shit hits the fan. Oh, and, okay. And this is, you know, just making sure that couples have a plan for it going wrong. I mean, a lot of people mm. talk about having an emergency fund mm. but also having that discussion, well, what happens if we have to use it and how do we bounce back from that? And, I mean, that, that shows up in all sorts of ways. It depends where you're at. It might be starting a family like we had or the fun of uh, in and around all of that at the same time as the business and the mortgage was huge or it could be the, the widow scenario or yeah. divorce or, or whatever else it might be. So you've got your kind of outs and, I mean, something uh, very boring that we talk about is super critical in terms of financial planning is that that idea of income protection insurance, having life insurance, having mm. like mechanisms in place where if it really goes wrong, right. then you don't fall apart completely financially. So you do advocate for that, for insurances? Yep. Yeah, mm. definitely. And I mean, they're like those types of insurances that we're talking to clients about are like it's not a broken finger. Something's really gone wrong. You're yeah, sick sure. and you're injured. You can't work. Yeah, and I mean the money side of things, it, everything can completely fall apart, and and most of the stuff is something you can't like. You're either selling if you've built up some decent assets, you could sell things to get yourselves through, mm. but in many cases, it's 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 just a looking at having a look at that and saying, well, if this happened, what where would we be? Mm. And could insurance that make sure it's affordable? Some of it can be paid through super as well. Can that fill the gaps if we need it? 
all the tricks of the trade. They're so good. I, I also heard too that um, particularly as the female in the relationship, um, I'm sure it goes both ways as well, but make sure you know like whose name is on the account. Like I've heard of like when the husband's mm-hmm. passed away and it's all it's all in his name and, and the wife has difficulty getting access to the accounts. Is that correct? Because she hasn't yeah, been added. Be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, this comes back to that idea of joint accounts for almost everything. Right. And I mean, if you're a couple and you're trying to work this through, we do a lot of work in that that idea of blending or merging accounts. Like often if people are, like you guys were fully joint, right, until yes. you, you set up your separate account. Mm. But a lot of couples that are newer will have everything separate and then they'll join maybe one account for expenses because they're paying the rent or the mortgage together. Mm. And then it grows from there, but often people get stuck then. And I mean, ultimately, the perfect the perfect result for us is often ninety five percent of clients we do the same thing for in terms of couples, mm. and they end up with their personal spending account each, but everything else is joint because most of the time, I mean, you're planning a life together, your goals are all joint in most cases anyway. The book is called Insufficient Funds, Make the Right Money Decisions to Bring Your Big Plans to Life. Uh, How soon after you guys formed your company, Sufficient Funds, did you decide to write the book? (laughs) Well, it was pretty much straight away, wasn't it? We kind of had this micro goal of this will be a little tool that will help educate clients as they come on board, but we kind of, it morphed into a much bigger project, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It morphed into something that, I mean, now we're super proud of it. But, I mean, that that idea of insufficient funds was from way back looking at the ATM slips. And, I mean, even in our uni days, we were selling trucker caps and T-shirts to what we thought would be our big brand, the surf brand that we'd sell to, you know, sell for $60 million and never work a full-time job <laughs> in our yeah. lives. Don't we all think that with our companies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that didn't happen, and here yeah. we are. But we were looking back on that, thinking, well, that and that's where the name "Sufficient Funds" came from. In terms of the business, was the was the flip side of that. It's it's no longer all time and no money. It's now less time and money. But how the hell do we bring it all together? Right. So the book was insufficient funds. How do we get to sufficient funds? And then those five kind of main steps to take that everyone can follow to to get you there. Do you both as a couple celebrate financial milestones and, and, and how do you do it if you do do that? So we have in the past. We I, I think we need to do it more and actually I had a really good, um, we've just started this new idea which I've stolen from someone else but it's having a bottle of wine. If you've given a really nice bottle of wine and you put a label on it and mm. write your goal on it. So if it's, Ooh. you know, my oh. house or I want to hit this particular salary or whatever it is and then when you've hit that goal you enjoy that wine together i love that with the person yeah. that gave it to you are you saying yeah it's yeah, well, right. well, so nice Could be. or just yeah just with each, you and me yeah whichever yeah. way yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, the reason I say that with the person that gave it to you is I, when I'm given a bottle of wine, I will write the person's name yes, that gave yep. me the bottle of wine and then maybe if they, you know, if we're still pals two years later and they come over, I'll pull that bottle out and go, hey, remember this, yeah, you know. Nice. That's had yeah. a moment to rest and, and and it's always nice sharing that. I like that in idea. In saying that, in saying that, we've probably always got bottles in the fridge ready to go so it doesn't have to be special. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, if there's bubbles ready to go, I mean, the smaller milestones will crack something very quickly. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to celebrate even the small ones because it feels like you've, you're moving in the right direction. Okay, asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> so say if there was a couple that really wanted to buy a house and they have basically realised that they're of a certain age and banks don't want to give them much of a loan because they're of a certain age now... <laughs> <laughs> is there any advice for those couples? Hmm. Speaking generally, James, could you give some general, general advice? So, because we're not I writing mean, this down or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, what do you mean we? It's like our friends that need help. Yeah. <laughs> so, for your friends, there are <laughs> the bank. Unfortunately, what the bank does is they're looking at, hey, we're going to lend you for th- a loan. We're going to we're going to put it over thirty years. I know. Mm. 
And that's the challenge. They're looking at, okay, well, where are you at that point in time and will you be working and what does that maybe look like? Young at heart. And so, young, young at, at heart, heart, fit yep. and healthy. Babe, you'll be okay. 90. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> not, in 31 years, I'll be, be 90. You'll be still what, virile and working. I'll be virile. <laughs> And I'll be working. <laughs> Bloody Dick Van Dyke just got nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award and he's almost 100. I know. So I can... Bet you he owns his own house. I it's bet he does. Good. Yeah. So go ahead, Jack. And his car. There's no, there's no cap on running smooth FM, surely. Exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> They're looking for exit strategies. And so you've got to come up with a plan around, well, if we are, if we're 90 and we can't, we're not working and we... I can't afford this. Can we pay out the loan with super balances, other investment? Is there anything else there that would would facilitate all of that to make sure that they don't have to sell the house yep. if you stop working and stop earning? And so right. if you can yeah, if you can if you can drum up a proper story around that, <laughs> or if you don't if you don't have a good mortgage broker, well then you can talk to us or someone else <laughs> all right. and sort that out. See, also, we we are so fortunate, guys, in that all of our parents are still alive. Mm. And so I'm hoping, although my dad did say to me, he goes, hey, buddy, I'm spending all of your inheritance. <laughs> I said, good on you, dad. You there's, just there's also get, five of you. so it's... Get rid of it all. I said, you just make your last check bounce, have fun, you yeah, know, totally. go for it. Um and uh, so I guess in that, like when you talked about the transfer of wealth that's coming, uh, generational wealth that is coming, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not relying on any transformation of, no. of wealth from our folks. I, like I, I really mean it. I want them to spend their money and have a great time. They, they've, they absolutely have worked a lifetime to mm. enjoy whatever that they want. Yeah. You know, at the same time, though. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I'm kidding. I'm You're terrible, kidding. Muriel. I'm trying to buy a house here. Yeah. <laughs> trying to buy a bloody I'm house. Friends, you friends, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any dreams or aspirations for your future? Oh, wait. Bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for us it's really um, that concept of complete freedom. So we, I, and we're already mm. kind of working towards that. So I think that's putting all our eggs in the one basket with the business is really – a step towards that and then, yeah, freedom of time, freedom of location. Um. Yeah, I mean, we started we started Sufficient Funds remotely and we've got a team of 24 now and everyone's working from home. And so, mm. like, it, it kind of, we could do it from anywhere and that was kind of the initial goal. But right. you still need the money to support it. And, I mean, because I guess what we love is the fact that we probably don't see ourselves selling this any any time because... If we can keep it rolling the way it's going, it's a lot of fun. And, yeah, good. And we feel like we're doing good work and we're getting results for clients. And so, I mean, ultimately it's it's just it needs to be more profitable and and support us to be able to go and do all the fun things we want to do and probably dial things back at some point. But, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. complete freedom and more adventure. So our listener can find you online and can work with you from anywhere. Like you said, you can you can be remotely, have meetings on Zoom and yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything's everything's online. Excellent. Isn't that helpful? So you and you guys have got three. Is it three three kids? Two kids. Two kids. Two kids. So are you already? How old are they? Seven and just about to be six on the weekend. Oh, oh happy birthday! Just about to be six. So. You, they're lucky kids because you will know how to assist them from an early age, I would imagine, money-wise, because that was something, love my parents, but they had that, like all the things, like I owned my own apartment when I was 19 years old. Now, if someone Mm -hmm. had said, keep the apartment, because I had no reason to sell it, if someone had said, just keep it, we would been a really good position. Uh, a very different position. <laughs> like there's so many things that like you look back on, but you guys know that already. So your kids are going to be super money smart. We just um we just make them negotiate on jobs and, and oh, we yeah. give them money if they yeah I mean I guess the skills it's <laughs> soft skills start them soft young. skills. <laughs> I think I think the sales skills is probably more important or as important as the money skills is being able to have conversations with people and 
and so yeah, we I mean we do we do we do the savings, the yeah. jars and, mm. and and all of that side of things. And we don't like we try not to reward everything because you live in our house, you've got to do some stuff, you've got to help out. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean Adeline, our daughter, will will come to us with a bunch of unfolded towels and go, Hey, I'll fold these for a dollar. <laughs> I'm like, All right. <laughs> Done. Right. Yeah, she's a good negotiator. And it's. Ne- do you think it's ever too young to learn about sort of the value of savings and, you know, understanding that side of things? I don't think so. I think so many people miss out on that, even the language, mm. you know, just communicating about money. So I think, yeah, it's never too young. Yeah, great. All right, guys. Um, the book is Insufficient Funds, Make the Right Money Decisions to Bring Your Big Plans to Life. Uh, it's available in all good bookstores. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. online as well. Brilliant. Okay. Excellent. And you are at sufficientfunds.com.au? That's the one. That's the one. All right. Before we're going to let you go, we're just going to hop into the shower for two minutes. We want you to answer these have questions. A cash yeah, shower. we're going to have a money <laughs> shower. Closer. We might stay in there longer if it's a money shower. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, just we want you to both answer the question uh, with an economy of water, please. <laughs> What's the most adorable habit you love about each other? Tash is talking in her sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. Oh, come on. And all the, and all the stories that come out. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I, it's really hard for me to decide one about you. I think when James gets an idea, he obsesses about it. So I do like to call him obsesso. Um, and he'll just, yeah, he'll gets down a path and just runs for it. So it's much, I think it's a double-edged sword, though. I, think I, hate it half the time. I love it. Half that sounds like a superpower. Yeah. Obsesso. <laughs> Is there a favourite moment that you would love to relive with each other? Yeah, the West Coast, we did a... A, a, like a Winnebago trip down the west coast of the states. Oh, mm. nice! It was probably about a decade ago. Yeah, three mm. kids. That was fun. Where to where? Uh we f- so we did a couple of days in Vegas, then we flew up to Seattle and drove from Seattle all the way down. Oh, we, nice! We took the Winnebago as far as I think we did. We go into Yosemite. We did Yosemite and then San Fran. Dumped Beautiful. it there and got a. I think we got a Mustang after that. <laughs> and went to LA. <laughs> As you do. We did the Mustang that's... around Napa and, yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's, what a great trip. Yeah. yeah. That was okay, Tash. Good. Yeah. Tash, it's yeah. hard to beat that now. <laughs> you can one. choose the same. It's um, okay. So the other one I would say is we did a bike trip where we we rode a bike, we rode m- mountain bikes, cross-country mountain biking from Luang Prabang in Laos to um, Hanoi in Vietnam. Oh. And there was a point in that trip we we often say like when we're having a really hard day or a really hard moment, we say we're foo lowing. We, <laughs> we had to just climb this hill, this mountain that was just like ridiculous, and we were definitely not fit enough for it. But we got to the top, and I think that nice. that moment really it was six Fulao, kilometers yeah. up, and it wasn't an and electric um, bike. Was, no, no. Mm. and it was like we we booked this group trip. And, and I don't want to relive that. The guy was going to tour. <laughs> it was the hottest. We didn't realise. We didn't do any research. We just booked this group trip and no one was on it except us. So we got this oh, private tour. Okay. Because, because it was the hottest time of year and it was yeah. also the time. So it's 40 degrees every day. Oh and God. the guys that they do this called thing they call slash and burning where this one month of the year they just burn all their crops. And so we're, we're riding along in 40 degrees just Smoky. inhaling. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it was good fun. <laughs> just to add to the fun of the 6K <laughs> uphill. Oh, my God. Yeah, the all the these moment on top of, of the mountain is what I was. <laughs> yeah. Or above the smoke, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you oh, go. Wow. All right. What the world needs now is? Patience, I think. Do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> no, she's, that's good. Patience is good. We're keeping the water. We're, we're, we're we'll conserving take it. water we'll here. take it. An ability to bite their tongue when we're going to say something silly. And that well, applies to me as much thing. as everyone else. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Love it. Yeah. Last question. One word to describe each other. Resilient. Oh, I was going to use you. that. I was going to use that. 
Brilliant. <laughs> Love that word. Um, determined. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Beautiful. James and Tash, we've got some friends that we uh, know are going to be calling you. <laughs> yeah. And that is really good. And I'm sure our listener has had their ears peaked as well, or certainly their wallets Correct. or their bank accounts Correct. Uh, with what you have to offer. So thanks so much for being with us today. Love it. Thanks, Cam and Ali. Thanks, thanks a lot, Cam and Ali. Thanks really for your time. It. Yeah, pleasure. Their book, as we were saying before, mm. I have started reading it. I know. And it really is a readable finance book. Like, I am... I don't know any of the lingo. I don't. I know so little about finance, hmm. but um, yeah, they've just written it in a very easy to read, you know, set out well, great way, and it's. I, I, I'm really enjoying it. How often are you reading it? Are you reading it every day, bit every day, or no, no? Just when I when I see it, I'm like ah, because I actually started reading it a lot, hmm. and then I got life took over for a little bit but um, right. but I've picked it up again and yeah. as a result of picking it up have you made any changes no okay yeah no I'm just in- ingesting the information okay fair enough no, <laughs> but uh, what I what I want to do is t- is actually talk to them in person and just see what how they can you know assist us in reorganizing our our life were you talking about us <laughs> no 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 just the, the friends can go first and they can oh yeah, and then we'll go after. Good thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. All right. <sighs> it's good to know. Yeah. I'm going to give too much of our personal life away here. Correct. Yeah. We can sneak around in the bathroom forever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us. All right. Till soon. Take care.